Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and today's shout out goes to Angel Rivera and Dan Tat Dian. Both were first to say first in one of my recent videos, and both win the shout out. So, congratulations! Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with a neat new drone. This is the Seafly Faith 2 drone. Now, this is the improvements of the Seafly Faith 2 over the previous C5 uh, Faith that I've reviewed in the past is this drone now comes with a 4K camera, true 4K camera, also with three axis gimbal and with five kilometer range of both control range and FPV video range. Those are a lot of improvements. Those are pretty big improvements over the previous version. Now, before we uh, go further into this, uh, as always, I forget to always show, this comes with a carrying case, a very nice carrying case for the drone and its accessories. I just wanted to show you that before we go on. Okay, now I mentioned it. this drone, um, I haven't mentioned yet, this drone is a folding drone. The idea is for portability with the carrying case, or I guess you could throw, also throw this in a backpack if you wish for easy portability. Other things about this drone, it does have brushless motors, okay? for improved durability and longevity of these motors as compared to a brushed motor drone. It also is a GPS drone, of course, with GPS GLONASS for improved accuracy of the GPS system. It also has automatic return to home and landing on command, on loss of signal from the drone, and also on low voltage. Now, I did mention it has 5-kilometer range, and I, and I want to stress that again, 5-kilometer control and FPV range. That's plenty of range, folks. Um, <laughs> to tell you the truth, that's more range than most people should be flying, okay? Especially most countries don't allow that. But this does have that capability if you need that type of range in a drone. Uh, additionally, it does have an optical flow system, optical flow uh, sensor in the belly of the uh, drone that looks directly beneath the drone and using the view that it sees helps to stabilize its position horizontally in space. In addition, it also has two acoustic sensors on the belly, right there and there. This, in addition with its uh, barometer system, uh, uh, air pressure sensor system inside here, helps maintain a very steady altitude of the drone, especially when it's close to the ground with the altitude hold sensor or these acoustic sensors, which are more or less uh, sonars, sensors that bounce the signal off the ground to help uh, maintain a stable altitude of the drone. Now, one other thing is this does have a very large battery. Let's take the battery out of the back here to show you. This is a 11.4 volt, believe it or not, 11.4 volt, 3100 milliamp hour battery. This supposedly gives this drone up to 35 minutes of flight time, which is very long flight time. Now, this battery must be charged with the provided uh, charging port that they give you right here. Um, it just drone, uh, let's see here, the connector's there and there, it slides on like so, and then you plug in a micro USB cable into the back, or into the back here, and I strongly recommend that you use a wall charger with at least 2 amp wall charging power to charge this. If you try to charge this with micro USB through your computer port, uh, it might take days to charge this big battery because the computer port on uh, most computers, USB port on most computers is only about 500 uh, milliamps. So use a good wall charger to charge this particular battery. Okay, let's put that battery back inside. Make sure I line it up. Um, in addition to the battery, let's see what haven't I talked about. Oh, I know what I haven't talked about. Three axis gimbal. I mentioned it briefly, but this does have a three-axis gimbal for a very stable uh, video. Um, it's improvement over the previous one. I believe it had only two-axis gimbal, but it now, again, three-axis. Now, and I mentioned it does have true 4K. What I mean by true 4K is its uh, video is 3840 by 2160 pixels, uh, 4K video at 30 frames per second. That is recorded to an onboard SD card. And where is that SD card? Right there. The SD card goes right there on the side of the drone. Um, now, I recommend that for those of you using this SD card, you will need an SD card, that you're going to need an SD card about 32 to 128 gigabytes in size. But more importantly, make sure that that card is a U3, has U3 write speed. Okay. The uh, older Class 10 cards, 
they're just not going to work with this. They're not going to be able to keep up with the right speed of the 4K video from this drone. So again, make sure that your card that you get for this is U3, has U3 right speed. Okay. Um, I, okay, I mentioned the video, uh, the photos of this. It also takes photos of resolution 5120 by 3840 pixels. Those are those are very high resolution photos. So that's you know this drone is capable of taking very good photos. Now let's talk about the controller. This is a biggie on, of this particular uh, drone is its controller. Uh, notice these antennas are not fake antennas. Okay, well, normally we see fake antennas on these these drones, <laughs> especially the lower cost drones. Uh, this one is not a lower cost drone because of this. But uh, notice there's wires going up in each one of these uh, particular antennas. These are true uh, long, you know, true antennas that you're going to want to have extended when you go flying. Um, this, these antennas give this drone the capability of both control range of five kilometer and FPV range of five kilometer. And how does it do that? Well, we, one thing we do have real antennas. But additionally, this particular controller has a battery inside it at 3.7 volts, 2600 milliamp per hour. Let me open this up. Uh, that's a large battery, okay? And that is how, you know, it, you need that extra power, that extra oomph to get that type of control range, particularly control range uh, from this controller. So, you know, a lot of that power is going into the um, 2.4 gigahertz uh, control signal from this drone. To give you that extra range from this controller. Um, another thing about it, this has a Wi-Fi. The other side of the coin is the Wi-Fi extended range of the Wi-Fi. This has a Wi-Fi amplifier uh, receiver uh, relay in, embedded in it. So a lot of that power, especially the control power of the Wi-Fi going to the drone, uh, is provided through that amplifier receiver in here so uh, again to do both of those uh, features this needs a lot more power to get out to five kilometers so that's why it has that 3.7 volt 2600 milliamp per hour battery now let's go over some of the buttons on this uh, particular controller we have a scroll wheel here for tilting the uh, lens of the camera up and down so you have that capability to do that remotely it also has a photo button so for taking a photo like so it has a charging port right here for charging that 2600 milliamp per hour battery. Again, um, I recommend using a wall charger to charge this particular battery also uh, because of its size. Um, this button here is for starting and stopping videos. Uh, the button here is for automatic return to home and landing. We do have an on off switch right here that you uh, quick press to check the battery power and a long press to turn it on. And you know it's on when you see that green light there. Uh, the button here is for automatic takeoff and automatic landing. Once you've got GPS, um, sufficient GPS satellites, press that button and the drone will automatically take off. Or when you're close to the ground or you want to land, you press that button there and it will land. Um, it also has a pause button. And this is for pausing um, automatic flight of the drone, such as for return to home or if you're doing circle me, follow me or waypoints and you're headed toward a tree, you can quickly press that button and it will stop the drone in its tracks. So it does have an emergency stop the whatever advanced flight features it's doing by pressing that button here. It has a GPS on and off switch here. To the left is off and to the right is on. I recommend leaving it to the right unless you're flying as a sport drone. You can put it to the left there and, um, for sport drone flying. But again, recommend keeping it to the right. And finally, um, it's phone holder here. Um, it holds larger phones like my uh, Uli phone, what do I got? Uli phone Armor 6E. But for smaller phones, it has a little adapter. Thinner, smaller, thinner phones, it has an adapter that you snap onto it like so, right there. And that's actually go from the front to snap it on and to hold on the smaller phones like such. Let me get that on there just to show you. A little bit tricky to get in there, but that's close enough for government work. <laughs> so that's for smaller phones. You use that adapter. So that's the controller. And let's see what I haven't talked about yet. Oh yeah, the app for this. This uses the CFI 2 app available in Google Play and iTunes. Um, but 
as with most of these drones this these days this drone uses 5 gigahertz 802.11 AC Wi-Fi and as I always stress um, not everybody has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi so before purchasing this drone I strongly recommend that you first verify that your phone indeed has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi and to do such all you need to do is Google your phone's name along with the term 802.11 and the term specifications and then look to see if 802.11 AC shows up in your search results okay let's go over what you get with the drone first off you get the instruction manual for the drone um, it's actually a pretty good instruction manual I just recommend that you read it from front to back so you understand the drone uh, along with this instructions about 5G Wi-Fi channel settings uh, in some countries they restrict the frequency that you use with 5G okay um, so if you get this drone and you know you have 802.11 AC Wi-Fi on your phone but you still cannot receive 802.11 AC from the controller I didn't forgot to mention that but I'll mention it here shortly um, you have the ability to change the channel to the appropriate frequency so that you can receive the um, uh, frequency from the controller and finally you have a battery safety guidelines and safety guidelines this is actually a lot of good info this is some of the stuff stuff that I like to push when I'm flying here I like to mention it when I'm flying safety stuff and I, again this is another one you really should read from the back there is really good stuff inside this um, safety manual for this particular drone so now I just mentioned uh, receiving Wi-Fi from this controller again this controller has a built-in relay that receives a signal from your phone and then amplifies it and transmits that signal to the drone similarly the signal from the drone comes to this receiver and then is sent to your phone okay that's again to get that five kilometer range so when you connect your phone to the drone you're not connecting you don't want to connect to the drone directly you want to connect to this controller first and then the controller will automatically connect to the drone so keep that in mind folks so that is about it now let's finalize what, we, what you get with the drone again you get the instruction manuals you get the drone you get that uh, carrying case that comes with the drone this is a little cover for the uh, gimbal I rec recommend that you insert install this cover whenever you're transporting this drone so that you prevent damage to the gimbal you get a spare set of propellers a spare set of propellers you get the charging port for the uh, um, battery of the drone again you get the controller and you get the controllers little adapter for some, uh, thinner phones so that's the C5 faith 2 tabletop let's take this out to the field and see how it flies so hope you enjoy this flight good afternoon quadcopter 101 here out at uh, Pleasant Ridge Park near Girard near the border of Girard and Fairview PA um, with the flight of the faith 2 okay to get this started we need to turn on the drone by holding down this button until we hear the chirps of the ESC's and then we place this immediately down on the pad and that's going to allow the gyros to calibrate and also the um, front um, gimbal to calibrate it's going through calibration right now and also now I'm going to turn on the controller and connect, it's connected to the drone we got a green light there the next thing I'm going to do is connect my phone to the Wi-Fi signal coming from the drone or actually connect my phone to the Wi-Fi signal coming from the controller and then the controller is going to connect its Wi-Fi signal to the drone so hold on folks while I do that okay before we can fly I need to calibrate the compass so you hit the three dots in the upper corner upper right corner then hit compass calibration then hit calibrate and wait and see if anything happens nothing's happening so I'm backing out we're going to start over again compass calibration calibrate calibrate hit it twice third time might be the charm are we connected yeah we're connected first turn drone okay I'm going to do it slowly by holding it like such rotating like such okay now I'm going to turn it vertical looking like it's asking for a vertical rotation 
first turn done rotate again calibration failed now I've had problems folks this is like the fifth time I've tried to calibrate this and keep saying calibration fails but I'm going to continue flying just to fly it see if that is a problem or not but uh, sea flyers should be aware that there is some issues with calibrating the compass with this particular app but we should be ready to go folks to fly so the first thing I want to do is start the video recording by pressing the record button up in the right upper right corner and it should be recording to the SD card and to take off I'm going to press the automatic takeoff button holding it down you have to hold it down for about two seconds and what I'm looking for here is any weird uh, toilet bowl effect that would indicate that the gyro compass does need to be cal recalibrated but it seems to be good okay seems nice and solid and right now we have uh, 15 satellites so we're good there so I'm getting in the picture here and say how you like my jacket today folks you know this is the first day that I've actually seen the Sun here in about a month so <laughs> that's cool that I'm able to fly today now I'm gonna lower the gimbal just a bit let's see that's the button there that's down and that's up and go up a bit higher okay and before we go flying further let me sync up the cameras for my lips for right now and I'm going to uh, stop the video recording because I want to take a couple photos so right now it's saving the video now I'm going to take a photo there's one photo take another photo <laughs> okay it hasn't done downloaded that photo yet there we go <laughs> take one more And it goes, the screen goes black for a second once you take a photo, and then we're done there. So that's the, the photos of it. Now I'm going to start the camera one more time. Video camera is recording. And sync up the camera like so. So my lips are moving in sync <laughs> in the video from the drone. And we're going to go up and away. Upward, or forward, and upward. It's a fast-moving drone. But I want to slow. Slow it to right about there. At that point there. And from that point there, I'm going to try to do a rotation of the area. Let me make sure it's nice and stable up there. It is. So I'm going to do a rotation to show the camera. And also I'm going to try to keep the flat ends of the antenna pointed toward the drone for better FPV reception. And it does look good. The video image does look good coming from the drone. So, all in all, not, not bad looking image from the drone. I hope it's recording properly. Okay, from there, let's fly forward and head toward the other end of the field from the other corner there. So pushing forward. It's a fast moving drone. I don't want to go that fast. Going overhead. Now one thing about this drone, um, I gotta say, it doesn't feel like a toy drone at all, you know. It's it's not, not at its price range. It's kind of a um, hefty feel to it, folks. And it is somewhat weighty, so it does need to be re registered is what I'm trying to say. Let me go up a bit higher so I don't hit the trees, just in case I go too far. We're gonna go above the tree line here. I'm not gonna fly into that tree line, though. I'm gonna turn back toward us away from the Sun <laughs> and back in this general direction here I want to fly I'm trying to keep away from there's people here today it's a Saturday and I don't want to bother them too much because that is not a quiet drone you can hear it up there pushing forward and I don't know if you can see Lake Erie off in the distance there or not today. I can see blue, so I'm assuming you can see it too. Okay, we're going to go to the other end of the field, far into the field, and then I'm going to do a return to home from up there. Up there at 28 meters. I'm going to lower the gimbal so I can see the road. I'm going to fly over to the end of the road there, which is about 150 meters, I'm guessing. And from there, we'll do a return to home. 
car going by. Here comes the road. Who needs roads? Okay. We're there. And from there, I want to double check one more time that my camera is recording. And it is. <laughs> Putting it back on my head. And we're going to do that return to home and landing. So here we go, folks. Pressing the return to home button. I guess you got to hold it down. And my return to home is activated. So let's see how it does it. It climbs 35 meters and zips on back. And here it comes. And let's see how close that return to home is. I'm going to hit the pause button before it gets down to the bottom because the ground is wet today. Raising the gimbal up too. Not too high. And it's starting its descent. Automatic descent. Back to its landing pad. And just to show you that I am not flying it. Now I'm going to hit that pause button before it hits, you know, the, the ground. Because we're going to try the other features of this drone here shortly. Coming down. Let's see if I can rotate it while it's coming down. Yeah, I can. And hitting pause. And I paused the, the descent. So you can stop return to home. You can stop uh, syncing it up one more time. You can stop any of the advanced flight features by pressing that pause button. Okay, the next thing we're going to try is follow me. Now to do that, we're going to go in the that one green it says position. We're in GPS position right now. But I'm going to click that button. Right, click it again. Go up a bit higher too. And I'm going to step back a bit too. And then we're going to hit track. That has followed me for this, for the CFI drones. They call it track. And we're going to track from an altitude right now, I guess we can make it three meters. Coming down to three meters altitude and track from there. So let's see how well this and what type of GPS follow me do we got here. It is a Hobson style. And it's actually doing a good job. I gotta say, how about if we follow toward it? We go toward it. When does it notice me coming toward it? Right now. And that three axis gimbal is doing a good job. How about if I turn to the right? It notices that too. And now I walk away from it. When's it gonna no it notices it right away. So there are some other drones that take a while to notice that you've moved. This one is picking it up rather quickly. So it does a good track, actually. Okay, we're going to come out of track now. Because the next thing I want to try is a orbit. Going back to position first. And bringing it closer to me. Okay, and from there, I am going to hit position again. And select orbit. And orbit is activated. And I think I need to pull back on the stick to uh, set the radius of the orbit. And there we go. So, orbit has been activated now. I'm going to let it go for a bit there on its own. But um, it's moving to the left in orbit. Let's see if I can speed up the orbit by giving it a little left uh, pitch. Can you increase the speed of the orbit? Uh, apparently not. How about increasing the range? And you can increase the range while it's doing this. That increases its speed a bit. <laughs> now the wind's picking up a little. And how about if, how far back can we go with this orbit? Going back a little farther. Oh, I guess about 10 to 15 meters back there. And it's doing a nice job. So the orbit works rather well with this. Um, I'm not sure if you can adjust the speed. I did not, I have to look closer in the the app to see if there's adjustments for the speed. But let's see if we can adjust the height. Giving a little throttle. Yes, we can while it's doing orbit. So that is orbit. So I'm going to come out of orbit by pressing orbit one more time. Now the other thing I want to try is these one key shots. So let's bring it over again. Bringing it closer. Right about there. And that video I'm going to stop right now and then restart it just to make sure I got 
the recording onto the uh, SD card. Okay, video's been restarted. Syncing up one more time, the cameras. And the video. And we're gonna select, hit position again, and hit uh, one key shot. And what does that do? Okay, I'm not sure what it does. <laughs> Pulling back on the stick to see if anything. I thought this had uh, other advanced flight modes. But one, uh, one key shot is not, does not seem to be doing anything. Can I hit, press, press that button? So I'm not sure what one key shot is. Uh, we had orbit, position, track, one key shot. But um, there should have been um, other flight modes in here. Uh, like um, they had rocket and uh, other things like rocket. And I forgot what the other ones were. But while we're here, let's go and do try... Um, waypoints by clicking the lower left corner here. Okay, going back to position. I'm trying to click the lower left corner screen. Maybe I need to come out of one key shot. No? Okay, how about that button there? The drone is recording. Please stop recording and try again. Okay, stop recording. Saving the video. There we go, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't find it. It's the upper left corner, the one that looks like a radio signal. Well, the first thing I want to try is flyaway mode. So, hitting flyaway mode, and radius of 10, 10 meters, and hitting next, and adjust the target to the green box. That's me, and hit start. And what's it do? Well, let's try it again. Let's go up a bit higher. Maybe get a little closer to it. Maybe I needed that. But uh, flyaway mode one more time. Hitting flyaway mode. Flight radius of 10. Hitting next. Just a target to the green box. Maybe I gotta get in there. Do I need to click the green box? And hit start. Hmm, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here, folks. Uh, let's try one more time. Let's try um, skyrocket. Next. Target to the green box. I'm clicking on the green box, but it's not doing anything. So, I got some issues with this app. <laughs> concerning these uh, advanced flight features here. Let me try some of the others. Oh wait, hit start. And it's not doing anything. So, uh, how about uh, Comet flight? The drone is centered on the lock target and rotates 100 degrees as it rises. So, maybe I gotta hit next. trying to get into the green box. So, you know, this might be dependent on having a faster phone than what I got, but, oh, it spotted me that time. <laughs> it spotted me that time. So that is working. I got in the green box. I don't know if it's still spotting me, but it's doing a, a, a outward uh, orbit. and recording at the same time. And I think it's supposed to come back down again. And it does. It goes around, up, and down as it does this orbit. So, that's interesting. Coming back down, and let's let's come out of that. Let's see if we can come out of that now. Uh, one key shot. And there, that's its completion. I could have came out of that by hitting the pause button too. What other ones do we got? We got circle mode. I want to try spiral flight. Next. 
target to the green box. So I'm going to get into the green box. Okay, I'm in the green box. I'm going to hit start. And there it goes. So now it seems to be working. I guess it, I'm not sure what the problem was before. Maybe I was too close. Maybe I was too far. But this is a spiral. Going up into the sunlight. And it's keeping the uh, gimbal pointed at me as it's doing this automatically. Keeping it automatically on me as it goes up and around. That's interesting. Okay, I ain't going to go too high. Let's stop it right there. Coming back down. And pointing the camera toward me again. As it comes down, let's raise up the gimbal. There I am. Come down lower. Right about here. And getting a little closer. I'm going to try again. Now we gotta hit that one key flight, I guess, to get this started. You gotta to go to one key flight. I, I figured out what I did, was doing wrong, I'm pretty sure. One key shot. One more time, one key shot. Okay, I wanna do flyaway mode. I really wanna do this. 10 meters next. Target to the green box. Get my face in the picture. I think I'm in it, no, right to the left, to the left, there we go, to the, <laughs> and next, no, one key shot, oh, it's not doing it now, oh well, okay, um, which one we haven't we done, we haven't done flyaway mode or skyrocket mode, so I'm coming down a bit. Pointing it right there. Hitting next. Skyrocket. And the app has crashed. <laughs> so close the app. I'm going to restart the app. So hold on while you restart the app. And the app is restarting. Connecting, connected, connecting. Start flying, and the app is back. Okay, so some issues here with, uh, you know, I try one key shot, and it just doesn't seem to do it. So while we still got some power, I'm going to come out of these, and we're just going to demonstrate the camera for the remainder of the flight. So with that in mind, let me start the video recording. Go up a bit higher, sync up the cameras. The cameras are synced, and let's just go out and about. It's a fast drone. It is a real fast drone. Notice that. <laughs> Let me stop it right there and go up higher. Raise the gimbal. That's not raising. The other direction. And continue on. Okay. Pushing forward again. Heading up on. I am recording. And pointing my antennas, the flat portion of the antennas, toward the drone. Turning to the left, turning to the left, pushing forward, going up higher too, just so I don't hit into any trees, coming to the left, and let's go the opposite end here. Now I tried to do waypoints. And I could not get the waypoint screen to open up. I'm going to try one more time. Make sure that the map has been loaded. Yes. Finally. So let's bring this back down here. I'm going to fly this toward me. And from there, that position there. Okay. I'm going to zoom out. I'm looking for the baseball diamond here. We're going to go to this diamond. I'm trying to go to that diamond. That's not letting me select waypoints. 
Okay, wait a minute. I guess I got to hit waypoint button. There we go. Let's go toward. That's just one of them. No, it's, I want to delete those. But let me just hit start to get to see if I'll go to those three positions. Hit OK. OK. Three little positions. Let's see it do that. One. Going to number two, way up there. Going to number three, over there. And then going to number, should turn and go to number four, over there. Okay, that's it. Let's try one to me. Let's try it again. Selecting that mode there. Point, point one. And I'm trying... <laughs> Let's try that weird route. Okay, I see it do that route. Hitting start. Okay. And I wonder if I can come down while it's doing it. Reducing throttle a bit. Uh, going overhead. Waypoint. One, going to waypoint. Two, I'm going to draw the squiggly line part of the waypoint. Waypoint three, and waypoint four. So let's come down from there now. Now flying manually. So that was waypoints. Coming down low. Boy, is this a fast drone. Can you hear that thing? Is it zip, zip, zip? Okay, coming back to Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi video, and for the remainder of the flight, let's bring it in closer. I want to show you how fast this thing is. I ain't going to come down too low because I don't want to hit myself, but look at that thing. Okay, coming back toward me. Zippy drone. This camera, it's keeping level. The FPV camera is. Going back up again. And I think our battery's getting low. Because I'm feeling blip, blip, blip. Better come down. Because our battery is at 20%, so we're going to land here shortly. Um, you get a vibration in the controller. Um, I, it does not seem to have a geofence. Or maybe a, I'm, I just lied. <laughs> Wait a minute, let's see if there's a geofence. Okay. The controller is lip lipping. But there is no geofence, low battery geofence. So we're going to land here shortly. Okay, we're at 10%. Is it going to land itself there? Or is it going to fly home and land? Okay, it's back to 20%. That was from going real fast here. Now it's at 10%. So is it going to return to home and land or not? I'm coming down a bit just to see what, it's, what it does. Is it going to land there or fly home? Let me stop and start the video recording one more time just to make sure I got the video recording before whatever it does, it does. <laughs> but uh, coming down a little lower just in case it does drop. <laughs> I don't want to break it. The ground's nice and soft right now. What does it do on low battery? Okay, it does not seem to have a geofence. I want to keep it above my head there so I don't get hit with the thing. <laughs> but it does not seem to have a geofence. But we're going to fly until it does something. Either return to home or drop. We're going to find out. Okay, so just flying it around a little bit more. Not going to go too fast. Raising the gimbal. And 
pointing it toward me. So, you know, with whatever battery power we got here, is it climbing? With the remaining battery power we got here, uh, let me give you my last thoughts here. Um, overall, um, it is a fast drone. It's a well-built drone. It seems to be well-built. Um, I had some problems calibrating the compass there in the beginning. Also had some problems with some of the advanced flight features. Uh, orbit position worked well. Uh, track worked well. You know, follow me worked well. But um, the uh, ad really advanced flight features of, uh, of uh, rocket and uh, fly up and away, those did not seem to work as well. And, and there we go. Final return to home. It's doing its final return to home and landing. Let's see it do it. Going up. <laughs> it's climbing to 30 meters, I guess. On low battery, I don't know why it's advisable to be doing that, but it is. And getting back. And let's see how close that final return to home and landing is. Coming back down. So, again, and... Um, there is no geofence on low battery. I don't know, sometimes that's a plus or a minus, so you're going to have to watch the battery power, in other words, uh, or else you might be too far out and uh, have problems. Now, I wasn't able to, to demonstrate the uh, five kilometer range. I just can't do that here, folks, where I'm flying these days, like I could back out in the desert. But, and there we go. Final landing and stopping the video recording. So final thoughts, yeah, I gave you most of my final thoughts there. This is, again, Seafly Faith 2. Now, didn't, there we go, that's better. Seafly Faith 2, now with a three-axis gimbal and five-kilometer range and 4K camera. Big advances is over the previous Faith. So hope you enjoyed this flight. Let me move it up here. This is Quadcopter 101 on a bright, sunny day. Signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.